the big butt. The big furry butt. The big monster butt. Yeah, this is Billiam. Every time I've ever looked at early education electronic toys, I got people in the comments asking for various things developed by LeapFrog. Clearly, this is the head of the educational toy market, the biggest frog in the pond. With the philosophy of being a toy in its shape, but an educational tool in its soul, LeapFrog has produced some of the most successful lines of educational toys and devices. Nowadays, their most successful product line is their LeapPad, an iPad type device designed for the education and entertainment needs of the young children who use it. But before the modern LeapPad, Leap Frog had two interesting platforms for educational software. The original LeapPad, a series of electronic reading aids, and the LeapStir, a device built like a Game Boy with exclusively early childhood and educational content. LeapFrog was a dominant force in the toy industry in the early 2000s. So let's learn a thing or two with LeapFrog, and I know some of you are gonna be like, oh boy, here comes the 25-year-old guy coming back to make fun of toys made for literal three-year-olds. I grew up with a lot of educational toys. I wouldn't be so critical of them if I weren't so stupid. So let's look at LeapFrog. Before we learn a bit more about learning, let me teach you something about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. Essentially, it's a secure tunnel between your device and the internet, creating an extra layer of security and privacy to your activities while you're surfing online. VPNs are especially helpful when connecting to a public network, which could possibly leave you open to others seeing your information and even your private information. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like skateboarding without no helmet. I just don't know if I can, you know, like advise that. But I can possibly advise using ExpressVPN to reroute your connection to a server in another country to unlock regional specific content on websites like Netflix, who has a vast array of different content depending on what region you're in. Like I've been watching Rick and Morty on UK Netflix. To get to the UK, you go bada bing, bada boom. ExpressVPN is the number one rated top VPN provider by many major tech publications. And with their 24 hour customer support and quick, easy connection right in the app, it's not hard to see why. So if you're interested or intrigued, go to expressvpn.com slash billiam to find out how you can get three months free. And thank you again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. The first product to be produced by LeapFrog to be a major success was the Phonics Desk. Careful if you're prone to addiction. Ha. The concept was first developed by LeapFrog founder, Mike Wood, when he realized his kid had no problems learning the alphabet, but had trouble connecting the sounds together to learn words. It's a tablet sized device, which would give children prompts to identify certain letters and spell out words with letter shaped buttons laid out in alphabetical order. The desk was the most popular toy of 1996, but a lot of their follow up toys were just major flops, including the Little Composer, a device which allowed kids to make their own music. Despite Despite the success of the Phonics Desk, LeapFrog was plagued with shipping delays and missed deadlines, which resulted in a $200,000 express shipping charge in the 1997 holiday season and a canceled contract with Walmart. Losing a major retailer like this could have been a death blow to the company in its early stages. However, the funds they got from the success of the Phonics Desk allowed them to purchase tech company Explore Technologies, who had developed the Odyssey Globe, which was sold at the Sharper Image, but I had the later released Explorer Globe rebranded to be a part of LeapFrog's Quantum Leap brand. It's an interactive globe that can teach you information about all the different countries in the world, including its population, major cities, its capital. Zambia, South Africa, Madagascar. That has all these different game modes so you can learn all about geography and fun in exciting ways. Australia. Who knew? LeapFrog's true success wouldn't come until the release of the LeapPad, an interactive reading device which was compatible with hundreds of adapted kids' books and original stories. The Jet Jet Zip. Introducing the LeapPad from LeapFrog. The LeapPad uses the same near-touch technology as the Odyssey Globe. Explore Technologies founder Jim Margraff was working on a follow-up to the Odyssey, which was a model of the human body, which had become increasingly more complicated. When Margraff met with Mike Wood, Wood's inclination was to simplify everything and make the product 2D, which led to the ultimate realization that you could make anything on paper interactive over the right surface, including expanding on the phonics desk's mission to help kids learn how to read and pronounce words. The bug dozer is little. The LeapPad itself is this plastic binder sort of thing that interacts with the book. Each book comes with a cartridge that connects to the side and each page's content is accessed through tapping the go icon on each page. Welcome to the LeapPad learning system. Touch the green go circle with your 
path when you turn to a new page, always remember to first touch the green go circle. Check touch the green go circle to let the leaf pad make sure they're the green. Go. Touch the green go circle to get started. To let the leaf pad player know what you want to read, touch the green go circle. Check that your book is lying flat in your leaf pad. Play. Touch the green go circle. Touch the green go circle. Touch 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 touch. The LeapPad comes with an introductory book that gives us a sample of the library as well as introduces us to the LeapFrog mascots. Leap the Frog and his two frog siblings, Tad and Lil. Introduction to Leap and Friends. It wiggles, Leap. The top one here. My tooth, it's loose. But you can also stop it and navigate the page in a more free play manner with all sorts of activities. Leap, Dave, Lil, Pot. Here we have Scooby-Doo and the disappearing donuts. His tummy and looked inside the donut store. His friends looked too. Doodles Donuts! Scooby and the gang have to help this donut shop owner find out who's stealing their donuts. In order to keep the experience engaging, if you listen to a page's content and then don't go on to the next page immediately, you'll be prompted to find certain things on the page as an activity. Look for Scooby's hidden paw print in the pictures. So Scooby has a hidden paw print on every page. You can press the characters or objects to hear additional dialogue and sounds, click around the page to discover other interactive objects, and click and hear individual words on the page, and even words within the artwork itself is clickable. It's a pretty cool thing. Scooby. That's me! Yeah. Scooby Dooby Doo! Yeah. How it works is essentially there are a series of electrodes under the pad and when the pen taps it, the cartridge knows what audio to load. The go icons on each page appear in a descending fashion, which help the leap pad determine what audio should play when the electrodes are triggered. If you don't click the right go button or if your book isn't laid down and configured exactly where it needs to be, you can easily start interacting with another page's content or the wrong object. No matter how many times I tried to line up the introductory book, it would just not load the right content. I had to press all over the place to get the right stuff to load. Richard Scary's Things to Know, one of the most adorable and appealing children's illustrated series. Eat. I'm eating. Lowly sits up in his chair like a good worm. Big fan of that f***ing worm right there. Certain pages even have games which promote you to find certain things and identify colors, shapes, or words to match a spelling prompt. Correct. Good job. Wow. Amazing. Incorrect. You fucking idiot. It's a pretty robust way to learn, and it caught on quickly. It was the best-selling toy of the 2000 holiday season, and went on to be the best-selling toy of 2001 period. This was at the height of Pokemon's popularity. There were follow-ups to the Leap Pad, which tried to integrate pronunciation mechanics with the microphone and handwriting as well. There was even an upgraded Quantum Leap Pad that had its own library of advanced learning materials marketed for kids up into the fifth grade. Eventually, the LeapFrog brand was replaced by the LeapFrog Tag Pen System. LeapFrog here. Okay, which is more fun? Reading SpongeBob SquarePants, Kung Fu Panda, and Disney Princess using the tag reading system from LeapFrog. Poe was hungry. Or reading the journal of amphibious species. I like this one. Move along. Which essentially did the same thing, but instead of a cartridge and the electrode case, the pen can interact directly with the tag branded books, which have optical patterns on the letters that are invisible to the eye. The pen is able to read and recognize these patterns in order to speak the words back to the user. While the Leap Pad's success helped LeapFrog become an incredibly successful IPO once they went public, by 2003, investors were starting to think LeapFrog had not expanded into enough retailers, and more importantly, that the Leap Pad was something kids would quickly age out of and that LeapFrog needed to expand into territories for slightly older demographics. Major companies like Mattel and Hasbro had seen the success of the LeapFrog and wanted to expand their early education lineup. Fisher Price even had a direct LeapPad competitor, the PowerBook. To a lot of people, I'm sure LeapFrog is much more associated with the Leapster, which was released in 2003 and retailed for $80. Only Leapster lets you have it all. Want it all? You can have it all with the Leapster handheld. It's a game system, video player, digital art studio, and electronic comic book all in one. It's my turn. Dream on. Ah. The Leapster Multimedia Learning System from LeapFrog. The Leapster is a handheld gaming device with a software library focused on education. Now it's taken me a long time to accept that there's no real productive reason to be critical of games made for literal babies. Coming from the side, blast the word. Boom. <laughs> 
I mean, from an entertainment standpoint in 2021, I as a 25 year old will not enjoy this. That is my roundabout way of saying all of these games suck from a quality standpoint. I just don't want to complain about it. But also the Leap Store is illegal. Its games were developed with and runs off of Adobe Flash. I am breaking the law right now. Leapster Software retailed originally for $25. Its library featured a lot of licensed games from tons of different children-friendly properties like Star Wars, Nickelodeon, Disney. Here we have The Incredibles. He fought evil on a daily basis. After several losses, he was forced to live like an average citizen. The Flash development allows for actual Flash animation, which feels weird to see on the screen, which has a resolution of just 160 by 160. Even publications at the time noticed it was a lot slower and more underpowered than the much more popular Game Boy Advance. But the Leapster also had a stylus, which allowed for specific kinds of games that couldn't be done on the Game Boy Advance in 2003, but could be done on the Nintendo DS in 2004. And while reviews noted that the Leapster definitely had its strengths, reviews also noticed that kids may grow out of it quicker than the Nintendo equivalents. The Leapster was also behind the curve on this early education technology thing. The Pixter was released in 2000 by Mattel and offered a similar educationally slanted library of software. And it used its pen for much more interesting, artistically motivated things. Most of the software features a variety of menus with educationally themed mini games that require the player to solve math equations, identify particular nouns and adjectives using context clues. In the incredible games, you have to do this all while paying attention to your energy, which can become depleted if you don't solve the problems fast enough or avoid in-game obstacles, like in an actual game. Into, Into the, the thick, thick of it. it. Here we have the backyard the games, which features a little less Into than educational content. It's like an I Spy game. I have to find all this surfer stuff, then I have to find all this Yeti stuff, and then I play a rhythm game. It's cute, but it's missing the Backyardigans music. Ugh. The Leapster was criticized for various reasons outside of just whether or not it was educationally valuable. According to a lot of people, the Sonic X game is one of the best on the system. It's a lot faster paced, like a Sonic game should be, with some pretty standard platforming, but the educational material is definitely not what makes this thing more fun than the others, you can just run fast as Sonic. Its content was criticized for not incentivizing learning with gameplay enough and for not opening the platform to third-party development, which seems like a no-brainer because all the software was very easy to develop considering it was using Adobe Flash as its primary tool. Like, I wanna play Fancy Pants Adventures on this thing. But many agreed that LeapFrog already used a lot of shelf space in stores at the time, so including even more software on the shelves on top of the Leapster and the LeapPad library would be a bit much. Still, well, I for one can't believe the LeapFrog library isn't a platform for free speech. What is this? The Leapster, not to be confused with the known crustacean the lobster, which my word processor often confuses with the Leapster, was a very successful line with three upgraded models. The Leapster LMAX had a larger screen size. Kids can learn to write letters on the LMAX handheld and then watch the letters magically appear on the TV in an animated story. The Lobster 2, I mean the Leapster 2, had the same library of games with expanded options, but also granted parents access to the LeapFrog Connect store, which was an online storefront for new games and software. Kids and their parents can now share the fun and learning online because the new Leapster 2 connects to our exclusive LeapFrog learning pad. While there were more prominent upgrades that featured higher end hardware, eventually both the LeapPad line and the Leapster line converged into the more modern LeapPad. The LeapPad Explorer, released in 2011, is an iPad style LeapPad and has proven to be an adequate replacement for both product lines. In a lot of my older videos, I talk a lot about how smartphones and tablets have consolidated tech toys and made it very generic. And I'm sure the modern Leap Pad is functionally a better product than the Leapster or the old Leap Pad ever was. But it is cool to go back and look at all the technology that led up to it. I mean, LeapFrog has had a lot of things that are worth looking into, but some of these are rabbit holes that deserve their own videos. So I'm gonna save it for later. Like, remember the fly pen? I don't. So anyways, I'm tired, I'm stressed. I'm gonna go get some sleep. See ya. <laughs> Say it like you're a Siri kind of. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Correct. Good job. Wow, amazing. Incorrect. You f***ing idiot. <laughs> Keep going? Okay. <laughs> Correct. Good job.
Wow, amazing. Incorrect. You f***ing idiot. <laughs>